So I really, really appreciate for your uh, the Ryan Consul, uh, Contra Center and the Electa Foundation for this course for the RTT. And moving to, you know, the last session is presented by the radiation therapist Whitney Benz. And he's talk about the image matching in CBCT. Now, today we got very second times and uh, uh, our senior radiation therapist, Mustafa Muhammad said, he is a very senior radiation therapist and he today will deliver very wonderful uh, the session the concept of very important radiotherapy safety and the error and prevention. In this uh, session, the he maybe talk about the culture of the safety error in the radiation therapy and error prevention. He also the 16 year experience of the MD Anderson the, from USA is a strong background of radiation therapy research and education. He having the various countries across in global, uh, very good network even academically. And sir, I really appreciate for your, the second times you deliver the lecture from this platform and welcome to you, sir, this session. Thank you very much. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Prakash. How you? Uh, thank you so much. Let me share the screen first. You know, I'm going to probably stumble on this. Let's see how I'm going to do this. Let's bring that up. Okay, share that screen. Are you all see my screen? Yes, sir. All right, let me put it on uh, presentation mode and make sure you all got this. Okay. I'm gonna try the do you see my note or you just see my screen right now? Prakash, do you see the note too or just do the uh, screen? Emily? Yeah, we see the notes. Um, yes. Okay, let so me just that. You can go up to the top where it says display settings. Display I settings, okay, and swap, yeah? Yep. How's that? Perfect. Perfect, isn't it? Thank you. I'm glad you guys are here. All right, let's go back. Again, the, like my brother Prakash said, this is a very, very important topic that we're going to talk. Uh, anything about radiation safety, basically, you know, uh, if you want to, if you want to put radiation in one word, just a safety. Got a lot involved. Like I said before, once we give it, you know, we can't take it back. So, uh, like, it's a long lecture today. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you it's about 80 slides. That's a lot of slide. But what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to do as fast as I can, but if I'm too fast, let me know to slow down, okay? Here we go. I'm trying to cover, you know, what's important on this. All right, so our topic is gonna be, first we're gonna start with error and radiation therapy. Then the second part is gonna be error prevention. You know, with great power comes great responsibility. You can see Spider-Man. So like, you know, as a therapist, uh, we're given that power. So they just uh, be responsible how to apply that power. All right, this uh, article from, uh, we're gonna talk about this. I think uh, Emily sent this article uh, to you last week. Ho hopefully you read it. It's very important article. Uh, sometimes, you know, I go back to it, you know, every couple of years and stuff. I just you know, to remind myself to check myself, you know, uh, because uh, it's a very, very, uh, which are high ranging. And uh, we're going to talk about the specific error in radiotherapy. Uh, so before we go to that one, there's like three different kind of uh, errors. Episodic is the one that affect only patient in single session. Just treat them for one day. They say you forgot something that was going to affect that. Maybe you may catch it the next time. Then you have a prog programmatic that affects the patient all treatment. It's only specific to that patient. Basically, you know, what happened to, you know, to those uh, patients, you know, uh, one of them are was treated 27 fraction and the other one three fraction. So that's programmatic before they find out the error. And the, the last one, systematic, that's uh, 
everything like it could be like from uh, the machine, the device that we use. Uh, so uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna touch up. I'm not gonna go deep into it, but you know, I just want you to understand uh, we have three different kind of errors. All right, this is the article. Uh, I hope you all read it. And if anybody is willing to discuss about this article, we could start with this one. Mr. Mr. Jerome, anybody, Mr. Parks? Anyone? Mm. No, you have any idea? Nobody? No. Okay, this article was written on a New York uh, Times article. Uh, patient reader, uh, I want to go back and read it though, you know, but I'm gonna talk, like I said, since I have many slides, I'm not gonna go deep into it, but uh, patient was treated with open field, and it's uh, IMRT treatment, but open field without MLC. So what happened is, uh, the IMRTQA wasn't performed. They, they didn't do IMRTQA. There was no like you know pretreatment check. Uh, there's no verification. The second uh, physics verification it didn't happen. So basically, the patient was treated with open MLC. So it was it wasn't checked by the physics and the therapist. As a therapist, you know we have to be diligent watching watching the you know every time you treat a patient, make sure that you know watch everything. See. It's not only watching the patient, you know, we have to look at that screen to make sure that, you know, we, we learn, you know, we go to school, we get trained that, you know, what's M MLC is. And by the time we get to IMRT, basically what makes that treatment IMRT is MLC. So that's the main thing we have to look at. So the patient was treated three fraction, 13 fraction, it's 13 grade per fraction. Think about it. That's like, what, a three, uh, I mean, a six, if we divide it, you know, average like 200, we're talking about six fraction per day, one fraction. And it's open, open MLC. And there's other factors that physics we don't even know. So the patient got 39 gray in three fraction. And that, that treatment creates, you know, a hole in the patient's neck. And uh, he died in 2007. Uh, I'm just, you know, going brief, brief on this uh, article. But please read it, and you know if you have any question next time when I come uh, for the final review, we could talk about it. And uh, you see here, for example, open open MLC and like uh, you know the MLC clause right here. So think about it. You open that and the head and neck. You know the anatomy is so small, but you get that much dose. And uh, always make sure. You know uh, again, uh, just repeating. You know I just want to make sure that is you know on the this on the, on the, on the slide. From the last slide about you know 39 gray in three fraction, I want you to you know to see it again and again. So it should make you mad. As I'm trying to say, as a therapist, it should make us mad. Now we have, we have to take some lesson from this. So basically, how are we gonna you know how are we gonna avoid stuff like that? Shortcuts. Be aware for shortcuts. You know this is you have a patient on the table. You cannot take shortcuts on this thing because like I said, once we give this dose, we cannot take it back. And Follow, you know, um, any center should have their own quality assurance policies. If they don't have, they need to start building that. Very, very important. And train the, train the you know, the staff uh, how to do, uh, how to follow those policies. And especially pay special attention to patient change during treatment. There's no way, there's no way on a third fraction or a second fraction, somebody should have a hole in their neck. So look at your patient, see what, you know, what, learn what kind of, Side effect could happen the first week, second week, fourth week. You know, like it's, we have to take this, you know, as a pride. You know, for us as a therapist, we need to make sure that, uh, that you see, it depends from center to center. For us, the doctors see the patient once a week, but we see them every day. We are their protector. When we see when we see them every day, and we see that, like you know, we notice that some big change that we never seen before. We you know we need to report that. To make sure that if you, if you don't feel good about that, you know what, uh, sir, you know, ma'am, sit down for a second. Let me call a nurse. Let me call a doctor. It's okay. Take your time because you know at the end of the day, you save the patient. I'm talking about that. You know, what's uh, called uh, 
stop the line. Uh, there's a policy that, you know, uh, they use in Toyota that is used in medical field right now, but I'll talk about it later. Stop the line. If you don't feel good about it, just stop the line. You need to be empowered to do that. Second patient. Anybody? Is anybody ready this one? Anybody want to participate on this? No? All right. Here is another patient, uh, Ms. Jean Charles. She was given a she was getting a treatment for her breast. And what happened is they forgot the wage. Let me go to the next one. They noticed that there was the wage was missing at 27, fraction of 28. She's almost done with fraction with this treatment. Weekly physical chart, you know, failed to, 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 to check that. They failed that, you know, if there's wage is missing or not. And uh, the radiation therapist administered those uh, treatment. So for sure, on the first day, we, we check everything. At least the first day, we check all oh, what's the wages in, out, what kind of wage, you know, what the angle of the wage, we check all that. So I think they miss all that. And she was treated 27 fraction without the wage. Let me go back for a second here. So she received three, three and a half times more than a prescribed fraction. Because imagine now, there is, you know, by the place there is a chest wall, you know, you close to the heart, the, the ribs and the, everything. Lung is there, you no, know, you know, she can't be able to breathe. And she also died. On that uh, article, you see another um, errors like prostate 90 patient received an incorrect dose. Uh, to prevent that, you know, peer review, that's, uh, you know, among the, uh, the oncologists, we have to check the plan, the prescription, and, you know, plan when we uplo upload, we have to check. It's all about checking, 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 checking before, like, you know, pre-treatment checking. Uh, brain, 77 patients give 50% more dose than it prescribed. It's, it's also in the article, uh, you'll find out when you read it. Uh, how to prevent physical calibration check more frequently, like we have to know uh, how, how often are you checking all this? And then they always say that we are the last line of defense as a therapist. So even though it comes to, I mean, most of the time we are the one who find the error, but you know, we have to be diligent on this checking those errors. Uh, Again, missed target due to equipment miscalibration. You know, all this. Uh, the, but you know what? When we do it in the morning, I think for us, there is when it's come uh, machine PM. You know, uh, permanent maintenance. We have weekly. We have monthly. We have uh, yeah. We have monthly, quarterly, and yearly. And every day, you know, we do the QA. Uh, I think uh, every center here in US they do that. Uh, so the, the physics needs to come up with the procedure, policing procedure, how to do it, how to apply that. It should be daily, daily check, QA check for sure, how to prevent here. Uh, morning QA. Another thing, you know, like bean modifiers, like wedges, wrongly positioned or misused or left out. Again, how are we going to print? Chart check, setup check. Machine upload check. So we got to check that. If you find any error, you know, report to physics. Prostate treated on a patient with stomach cancer. Again, check the consent, plan check, prescription check. Uh, I talked about that last time. Uh, you know, make sure that you have, you know, have the patient picture. Make sure that you have, you know, verify that. Communicate with your patient. Time out. Uh, outside treatment, not only inside, outside treatment timeout and inside treatment. Make sure you, you, you talk that and talk to your patient. Make sure you get the patient involved on the treatment. Uh, because you're not saying that we're going to forget, but tell them that, you know, Mr. You know, Mr. John, uh, make sure that, you know, let us know if you have any concern. You know, sometimes patients are like concerned, you know, they're afraid that, you know, uh, they don't know, but you have to empower them to talk to you. If they find any kind of mistake, you know, they, any kind of concern, they will communicate. All right, our, this is our first poll. What do you use to correctly identify your patient? Patient full name and date of birth, patient full name and medical identification number, patient last name and date of birth, patient first name and date of birth, AMB, or all of the above. 
I'm gonna give you like a couple of minutes to think that. Let me know you guys are ready. Yeah, apologies, um, Mustafa and Prakash. I, for some reason, our polls didn't come through the meeting, um, so I think everyone will have to use the chat um, just to put no their problem, answers. No problem. Sorry chat, about uh, that. I'll give you one more minute for the chat, so we'll go to answer. All right, I'm just going to go, uh, somebody, can somebody answer this? No, nobody's willing? Okay. It's B that we are using mostly. Okay, okay. F Anybody else? F, 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 F. I think B is correct uh, answer. B. E? I think you can use everything. Yeah, and B. Yes. All right, let's go to the answer now. Okay, the answer is A and B. Because some, you know, so, some places they probably don't have a medi 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 patient medical information number, but you know, if they give you, I think one of two, we good patient full name and date of birth, or patient full name and medical because medical information number is the uh, it's unique for every patient. We will be able to use uh, A or B, but. Patient last name uh, C. Uh, let me talk about C. Why is the wrong patient last name and date of birth? You know, you're gonna have like probably five patients with the same last name, so you don't want to use the last name. Uh, first name for sure. Somebody have the same kind of but you could, date of birth is okay, but first name or last name is not okay. So it's A and B. Uh, all right. Another question you connected to this one. How do you correctly identify your patient? Mr. John, will you tell me your date of birth? Miss Mays, what's your last name? Mr. Aziz, were you born on January 1st, 1977? A and C? What's that about? Feel free, you know, to answer. It's C. C? Okay. Yes. None of the above. All right. The answer is E, none of the above. See, Mr. John, will you tell me your date of birth? Because now you're telling the patient, no, Mr. John, the way you want to ask them is, after you introduce yourself, ask your patient, will you please tell me your full name and date of birth? Don't leave them, no. Don't tell them like, you know, Mr. John. Or oh, because sometimes, you know, these people are like going through a lot of, a lot of, uh, what you call it, uh, you know, they're getting chemo, they're getting, uh, you know, radiation, they're taking all this medication. They probably cannot hear you properly. They think that, you know, probably, Mr. John, you probably told Mr. Tom, you know, they, they may think that way. So don't let them, you know, don't, don't leave them with the name or Miss Smith, what's your last name? Uh, Mr. Aziz, what you, you know, just uh, the, all you have to do is uh, after you introduce yourself, you say, will you please tell me your full name and their birth? Yeah, answer is E. It's very, very important. Very, very important, you know, like, you know, they tell you the name and the date of birth. That way, you know, you got the right patient. Patient receives some honest treatment. Uh, how to prepare this one? Again, RT check, check the plan, the prescription. Uh, again, you know, ask the patient to tell you their name and just like I just said right now, uh, don't pull patient treatment plan until you bring the patient to the console. Yeah. Make sure the patient are by the console. Make sure they're there, you know, like uh, don't pull them. Uh, probably you're behind, you're behind the schedule. You're trying to get ready and stuff like that. That's a disaster, you know, going to happen. Make sure they're right there by you and ver verify that as the name right by the console. Another thing, don't bring a patient in a treatment room until the room is empty. Make sure the patient you just finished treating is out before you bring uh, another patient. That way, you know, you could avoid because, you know, we, we it's when you're busy, you know, we run up and we're trying to catch up on time. We tend to forget other things. So, you know, have a policy, a safety policy that protects you from something to happen. You know, we're human, you know. But we have to create. All right. Which type of fractionation do episodic error have the largest effect? 
earlier I told you that that's like only happening one fraction, yeah? So the error is the error happening one fraction. Which one is that? We have like the highest, I mean, the most effect to the patient on the standard fraction, hypofractionation, on hyperfractionation. Hypofractionation. Uh, is it a B or is it B? Hello? Anybody else? It's B, hypofractionation. It's B, Okay, can you explain to me why is hypofractionation? Because the dose perfection is high for this one. That's it. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, because those in hypofractionation, you know, you, you're giving a high dose. So if that error happened on only one fraction, it'll have much effect, much, you know, much side effect basically in hypofractionation. All right. So how do we prevent error? You heard this about, you know, uh, first do no harm. You heard in any, you know, in a, any article either about, patient safety, this pops up. So that's our responsibility, whether we physicists, doctors, therapists, nurses, dosimetrists, but it's do no harm. That's our main goal. Uh, how are we gonna do, you know, we have to run intentional safety, you know, you have, we, have to have, we have to build a system that protects patients, incident learning system, if anything happened, how do we address that? We have to have those incident learning system, error prevention system, department individual. So we have to build, we have to have policies and procedures to uh, make sure that uh, uh, we, we train everybody um, to avoid this kind of mistakes. Promotional best, best practice, you know, let's promote that, keep doing that and have you know, a checklist. Uh, and there's a, I'm sure there's a, a link I'll talk to you at the end of it. There's, there's a from RCC, they have some uh, checklist that developed by some uh, centers, so you'll be able to use that as a, as a template. And safety is no accident. This thing is have too many. The first thing is like safety is no accident because it's intentional. If you if you're building a safety, it's intentional. It's, it's a you know. Uh, you want it, it cannot happen by accident. The second meaning is if there's safety, there's no accident. So it, it's, it's intentional. I like this, uh, it's, it's very, very, very intentional. So safety is no accident. Remember that, uh, you know, it's intentional. Uh, policy has to be built to get there. Here you go. This is uh, the errors like in you know, radiation. You can see that uh, collected at uh, 2013. And uh, when you look at it, let me click one more here. You see this most of right here, human failure, 35%. Uh, like, like these are like, you know, some of them, you know, uh, hardware, software, but especially this one concerning to radiation therapist, this is my, the majority errors are right here. You know, inadequate training, inadequate communication, communication is the key, uh, you know, uh, procedure, process and procedure, standardized, we need to have that, and again, human failure. So look at it. it's a big, it's, it's a big one. It's a big one. Uh, but at the end of the day, like I said, we the one who find the errors too. Power to radiation therapist. We catch most of the power. I mean, most of the errors. All right, stop the line. See, stop the line is created by Toyota. You know, Toyota have one of the best car in the world, and you know, they build Toyota, you know, they build Toyota, and they build Lexus too. This is one of the top cars. Uh, you know, for durability, comfort, but it just didn't happen out of vacuum. See, safety is no accident. They intentionally built that. So they have what's called under cord. Right now, I think they changed it to a push button. What happened is when on an assembly line, if somebody see some kind of error, they pull the cord and right away the supervisor comes in to check what's going on. If they if not be able to, if they'll be able to solve it, they move on. If not, they'll stop and, you know, they start over. So basically, stop line. What we do is here, 
in our, in our institution right now, everybody's empowered to solve the line. Doesn't matter who, you know, uh, from therapist, radiation therapist, the symmetry, physicist, nurse, doctors. If the, anybody feels that, you know, this treatment is not, they don't feel comfortable, you stop the line. You just say that. Doesn't matter. It's imp everybody's power. You're not going to say, that, oh, this per person is higher than me. There's no such thing like that. Because, you know what, we are working for the patient. The patient is bigger than all of us. So I'm asking the centers to empower everybody, empower everybody to stop the line. Okay, let's say I stop the line and we stop the line for about 10 minutes. Let's see nothing, no, no, no wrong, no mistakes found. It's okay, guess what? We saved the patient. Look at those two patients that we just talked about. They died. So there's no pride in this case. There's no pride. It's bigger than all of us. This cancer case is bigger than everybody. So what? We need to empower people. We need to have a policy to empower people. Every center needs to empower everybody. If they don't feel like, if you don't feel like treating and stuff, let's, you know, go ahead and stop the line. Because it's too late once you give the radio, you know, the dose is too late. We cannot take it back. So look at those mark of excellence. And that's why exactly what happened. Why, why is that happened? Safety is not accident. It's intentional. So, you know, if you, if you guys are see when you, if you drive Toyota or Lexus, or if you see somebody's driving Toyota and Lexus, remember what I said today, stop the line, okay? Hopefully I'll remind you. Okay, I'm just gonna talk about this here. Uh, I just wrote that, why, why safety? You know, sometimes we have sore throat, you know, difficulty swallowing and we say like, oh man, I cannot swallow, you know, you're trying to eat the food you like and you know, be able to eat that. And you're like, oh man, you know what? Hopefully I feel better in a week. And you feel better in a week. Then guess what? You go back to your uh, routine. But look at that, throat cancer patient. Okay. All this, all these side effects. It's not for a week. Maybe for months, maybe for years, or maybe forever. That's why we need to stop the line. That's why we need to follow this. This is human. We put in there. They're going through this every day. If I have sore throat tomorrow, you know, I'm going to give me some over-the-counter medication and I'm going to go back, but, you know, probably after a week, I go back, eat what I want, talk the way I want. Okay. They have all swelling in the neck, weight loss, difficult swelling, cough, and blood. This is the people we take care of. This is the fighting for. So what I'm trying to say is, this is why we have to follow safety. That's why we cannot cut corners. Brain cancer, headache. You know how much we had a headache. You got a headache, you don't want to go nowhere. Okay. For how many days? Maybe a week, a couple of weeks. Look at what they have. They've got thinking, speaking, weakness, numbness, loss of balance, confusion and disorientation, memory loss. These are human that we're treating. That's why we, we need to be serious about our safety. Yes, like I said, you know, that things happen. I know things happen. We're behind, machine goes down and stuff like that. But that's not their fault. They trust you. They trust us when they come there. Stomach cancer, pain in the abdomen, bloating. Imagine, you know, you be driving home or you're walking home, you're taking a bus, you know, now you're about to, you know, diarrhea is coming. You, you're so much scared. You need to use the bathroom. Okay. You take some emodium, you take some medication. Couple of days, three days, a week, you stop eating some kind of food. We good. Look at what they got. This happens every day for a month, for a year, or for life. I want us to put personality in this, you know, in this treatment we do. They're not only numbers, the medical ID number, they're not just numbers. They're not like an assembly line in a factory. These are people. They have loved ones. You saw that picture, you know, the lady who died of uh, you know, the breast cancer. Look at the family. Husband, wife, two kids. They lost, you know, he, he lost his wife. They lost their mom. This is reality, this is real. It's not about you. It's not about me, it's about them. It's bigger than our feeling. This is what happened. So, you know, these are like, you know, the, how, how are you gonna fix this, you know? When you look at it from personal, personal approach, failure is the result of unknown human behavior. Seeks to blame the person responsible for failure. 
So this is what we have to uh, avoid, you know. Uh, you need to teach people instead of, you know, punishing people. That's what we have to do. Because, you know, if you start punishing people, you know what's going to happen? They're not going to report errors. They're going to try to hide it. So we need to design a system that works for humans. We human, you know, I mean, we, we, we make error. We're not, we're not perfect, but we have to make a system to avoid these errors. Uh, James Reader, he said, we cannot change the human condition, but we can change the condition under which human works. So have a policy and you know what? Again, we cannot change humans, you know, we all have different current condition, but you know what? When we have a policy and we get hired to work on that place, we have to follow that policy. But we have to have solid, solid policy. Protect us and protect our patient. All right, this is a uh, is you know, uh, you look at it, this is a Suchi's model. Uh, it's like, you know, slice of cheese. You, you can see that there's a hole, but so if error happens and goes straight, it's, you see here's the hole is our error. It's happened, but on the second slice, since it didn't align to it, it didn't go through. It didn't go through here. Then on this one, it passed two of the slices, but on the third one, it stopped. So basically, we have to check. If it means like, you know, the oncologist, you know, then goes to physics, forgot that, but you know, therapy stopped it. So like I said, we're the last line of defense. So this is a successful layer of defense. So basically, by checking, don't depend on, oh, okay, you know what? The doctor checked it, the physician checked it, it got to me, you know, I'm, I'm good. No, check that. Like I said, we're human. We have to go back and check. That's why we have to have policies that everybody needs to check. What I'm saying, well, I'm not saying that they're not responsible. Everybody's responsible to this. Everybody's responsible in preventing error. See, right now here, you can see that went through because there's no any defense in here. These holes are the weakness, you know? So peer review, doing catch it, physics doing catch it, you know, therapy didn't catch it. That's it, machine cure didn't catch it. That's it, patient got treated. So this, uh, we everybody, we all together in this. What should we do if you discover an error? First of all, like I said earlier, eliminate punitive reaction to an error. Don't punish anybody. Create a system that creates, you know, create a system that prevents these errors. Like I said, if you if you out just to punish people, then you know nobody's going to report the error. They we're not going to learn from that. Create confidential, you know, uh, they, if the people to report, so they don't have to uh, identify themselves, and educate about a culture of safety, which is you know train people, simplify, don't make it complicated. Have something complicated because if it's, if it's a long one, nobody's going to follow it. Make it simple, uh, and if I see easy access to it, hello. Anybody have a question? No, no, you can go ahead. Okay, okay. So uh, simplify, make it simple, get to the point so people can follow, facilitate easy access, and have a reporting system. Uh, you know, have that so people can report what happened uh, and, you know, uh, review, you know, feedback, talk to stuff like that. You know, the thing is our goal is to prevent this error from happening again. So instant learning system, system to collect information and error and near misses. Near misses are like, you know, those errors like, you know, they didn't affect the patient, but they were very close. So try avoid, by avoiding that, by avoid. What is the data used for this? You know, you have to have a committee, uh, you know, who's in a committee, for sure, participate, everybody have from uh, therapists, the symmetrists, physicists, and doctors to be in that com committee. Uh, it's very, very important to make artists participate on this committee. Because we are the one who sees this patient. We are we deal with stuff. Decision should be made. When the decision is made, we have to participate. Uh, what kind of corrective action can we do? What's a unique event? You know, that I talk about, you know, what did org when? What's the weakness? You, know, you have here, you could, you know, you could, you could, you could, you know, go through this. What can be done to prevent this from, from happening again? What is not is, you know, incidence is not for blaming or shaming an individual. This is what we have to watch out. You can't, you know, if, if, like I said, if you blame and shame an individual, they're going to stop, you know, they try to hide errors. 
That's what you don't want. They're not going to affect our patient. Uh, so, you know, if an individual mistake, you know, was that a gap in our system? Do we need any more training for, for that individual? Do we have like, you know, the workup flow? Do we have like, a work, do you have time to treat patient actually? You know, to prevent errors. And how many RTT do we have there? I don't know how you practice on the clinic there. It's very, very important to have two RTTs. The reason is, uh, I know, you know, some some centers, you know, strapped with, uh, you know, uh, resources and stuff like that, but you know, the furthest resource should go to the RTT because we are the one pressing that beam. We the one pressing the button to treat. So you don't want, you know, tired RTTs are, you know, treating people. And guess what? When there are two people working, there's accountability. They check each other. Sometimes I may be tired. I'm look at the, the film, look, look good to me. Probably, you know, in a, in, a, in a place I look at, okay, that looks good. Probably that a CM off. But guess what? That the CM and then, you know, the CM off it doesn't show you, like, unless, you know, you look hard, you may think that, oh, okay, that's four, it's not five. But, you know, my, my, my colleague is going to say, all right, listen, stuff, I think, you know, you, you, you're wrong, man. You know, yeah, we, you know, we often one CM and stuff like that, or even have a CM. So have a second person to check. And, you know, let's say it's a busy center. When the one therapist is, you know, treating and stuff like that, the other maybe answer phones and stuff like that. I don't think the therapy who treat that should answer the phone. You gotta be focused on the patient only. During Once the beam is on, there's no any distraction. One of the therapists have to look at the patient the whole time. So it's very, very important to have two RTT, a minimum of two RTT every time patients go to the room. Again, you know, this, uh, you know, things to keep in mind, making corrective action, subject matter, what, what, what we have to do, you know, uh, resist art to make like, you know, when we make policies, make it like a smooth, you know, uh, you know, solution should be simply straight, straightforward. I'm going to click on those, but, you know, because they're repeating, and like I said, I have 80 slides. Uh, if this is significant, you know, uh, you could, you could have like confidential or, you know, voluntary outcome, but, you know, if it's something that has to be required to report, but like I said, if you if you know punitive, like if, if if you don't punish people, if you don't know shame them, they're gonna come and tell you what's going on. At department level, you know, policies, workflow, environment, you know, for policies, QA, uh, QA program, automation, you know, you, you have a good solid QA, uh, you know, quality assurance program, automation, automation makes things easy. Uh a standard, have a standard policies. You know, and have a checklist. Environment is environment is organized. Make sure that areas are organized so it's easy to reach. You know, so to make sure that you know, if you if you have to see a patient where you treat, make sure the things you know blocking your view, uh, the door, uh, like everything has to be organized. Even like a chair, the way you set you set up the chair inside the room so it doesn't trip the patient to fall. You don't want to give them another you know issues. Well, they, look at that for example here. Look at this right here and this one. See straightforward. This is like clutter. So basically, you know, you want to be organized. You, you can see uh, everything from MLCs, you know, your patient, you can read the field, images, you can see the room. So this is the right one, that's the wrong one. Yeah, yeah another thing, like I said, you know, multitask. That's like, you know, uh, like I say, it's a policy statement. They want you to be a multitask, not in a radiation therapy. If you're drawing, if you, if you, if you treat a patient, no, you don't want to do that. You see, your brain, when you do radiation therapy, your brain should be 100% on the patient on the treatment. You don't want to add any other tasks while you do that. That's why, again, I go back again, the second therapist. You don't want to do that, you know? Uh, so, uh, you know, you know, multitasking, you know, all this time. Um, so to me, it's a sham, you know, especially when you do, you know, uh, when you do uh, radiation therapy. You want to focus on that. So, you know, me mind this distraction. Uh, Again, having a second therapist that helps that. For example, if a nurse wants to have a question or the doctor, you know, one ask question or physics is there, you just focus on your patient. The other therapist should answer that. Yeah, please know this, you know, that's basically, you know, you, you avoid that. Create a suitable and quiet environment. For individual level, you know, uh, training, all the, you know, training, uh, human factors, uh, those, uh, uh, this was going to affect uh, individual training. Very, very important. You know, there's continuing education. 
and then, and then you list a new software came in, uh, just, you know, train the patient, uh, train the, the therapist. Everybody needs to be trained. Those are different kind of training, you know, the whole professional team, uh, schedule and a compass, particularly with learning management system. These are like, you know, it depends from center to center, but uh, uh, if you go back to it, I'm going to send this uh, PowerPoint presentation, but, you know, external for external training, promote for other professionals, the professional association that, you know, deal with oncology, radiation oncology, radiation therapist, join that uh, with other institution, you know, sometimes exchange knowledge. We can learn any member of a community, you know, who, we have to have that conviction. Earlier I talked to you about, you know, this, you know, the head, you know, the brain cancer, stomach cancer and stuff like that. We need to, when you see that, you know, it should push us, you know, we have that conviction to, to learn, to be good at our art. You know, uh, willing to learn, and we have to be open-minded, open-minded, be learning. So, you know, these are like the human factor, uh, you know, physical tiredness, personal stress, interruption, distraction. So is it, imagine put one patient, one, one therapist to treat the whole day and imagine what's going to happen. We have a life too. Let's say, you know, you, the only one to work that day, you come in and somebody, you get a phone call and you know, you, you, your child is sick. Now your stress level is going high. Now you're trying to finish fast, you know? It's all that stuff like that. So again, we can't be, you know, when we come in, we have to be fully dedicated to our patient. But like I said, have, have the therapist, have the second one. I'm going to stress in this one. Don't let the therapist treat by themselves. And, you know, interruption, distraction. Uh, this, I know, this is, this is what we have to follow. We have the high, high ethics. You know, basically, a high degree of professional ethic and will only allow a correct treatment to be delivered. That means you have to check everything as much as humanly possible, since the beam is invisible. We don't see the beam. So, uh, you know, we just follow policies, we just follow everything, that means we did the right thing. We take our x-ray, make sure that patient positioned the right way. That's our professional ethic. Uh, this is like your checklist. Uh, those in purple are actually affect us. Uh, I spoke about it this one, but uh, basically, you know, uh, simulation, Got to check all this before treatment, pre or post, uh, before we bring the patient and after we bring the patient. Click on that one. They have a little checklist, and uh, you know, these are chart check simulation, treatment before. So I'm going to click first so we can see what we need for simulation, correct patient, signed consent, physician order, all that stuff. Make sure that, you know, before you simulate, um, go, you know, this is what you want to check on the chart. Correct side, plan, match, prescription. A console. You check that, you know, set up, correct side, correct plan. And when you put when you put a patient in a room, like you know, having two therapists, for example, we have Mr. Smith on table, you know, we're gonna ask the patient, uh, will you again, if you give them like, for example, let's say a patient have a mask or a patient have a, a stunt, ask the patient, sir, can you please tell me again you, you, you first say name? So you put the right mask, verify that inside the room. You don't want to give patient the wrong stunt, especially, imagine, you give them the wrong stunt and you put it in their mouth. And you tell them, hey, sir, that's a wrong stunt. Imagine, that's somebody stunt in their mouth. They'll never trust, trust you, you know? So, again, in the room, ask the question and communicate with one another. Oh, we have Mr. Smith, his head and neck. We're going to put that. His head holder is six, you know? Communicate to one another loudly. You know, build a checklist, but avoid. Try to avoid, make it, don't make it complicated. Try to avoid that because nobody's going to follow a uh, big list. Look at this. This is from January 14 to, uh, I mean, 2014 to 2021. This is where, you know, look at how many errors that the therapist caught, 45%. You see? So what I'm trying to tell you is uh, we are the last line of defense. You see that, like, by the time we get that 45 seconds, we love, you know, uh, we discover the event. So uh, we have to be proud of ourselves. We did this. We have to keep doing it. If I see everybody and got to us, 45 percent, that's a lot. But we caught it. We didn't reach the patient. Power to us. All right. 
Again, stop. We are the last line of defense. Last line of defense. Once we give it, we cannot take it back. All right, I got another question here. Does anybody know Salara? B. B? Or B. B, 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 B. Yes, we know it. B. We know it. All right, all right. Yes, I think everyone's known to the Alara. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So, B. Alara, it is B. Yeah, this is like, you know, when we give radiation, okay? Absolutely. Take x ray, especially when we take x ray, because, you know, uh, we're talking about kilo voltage here, you know, especially with kilo voltage, as low as possible, you know, reasonably achievable. If you don't have to do it, you don't have to do it, basically. You know what? The lowest dose we got to give to a patient. When I, you know, when I train uh, students or therapists, they come to me. This is what I told them every time. Every photon counts. Every photon counts. It has, uh, for me, it has two meanings. First of all, every photon you give to a patient counts because you know it's going to count to their dose. Even those KB may say that, oh, you know what? We're going to we're giving them a, a mega voltage radiation. And it's like, no, it's not okay. It counts their dose. There is no good photon unless it's used for the right thing. The right purpose. Another one, the second meaning is make it count. Every photon counts. So when you take X-ray, make sure that it's necessary first. Second, make sure that it counts. That's it. You take make sure to make only one X-ray for that. Positioning pressure proper. Positioning first. Before, like instead of like, you know, you let them on the table, I was like, you know what? Let me see. How's the setup? No, get them positioned first. You know, put them on the right spot, then take the X-ray. Make sure every photon counts. So that's all. Practice Alara every time when you think stuff. So here's the thing. Look at the when we take manual when we do like those manual uh, machine. You know, when we do that, that I know it's digital. But here, here I can see what I see is you give the KB and you got the MA and you have the mass right here. So you have to turn those, you know, knobs to get to this technique. When we do that, we know that there's, you know, a, you know, a hand and brain connection. You know that you're like, oh man, you know, okay, is that KB too much? You know, because you, you're moving and stuff like that. And you said, okay, do I put too much mass and stuff like that, okay? But now we don't do that anymore. The machine takes it and stuff like that. So since they don't have that connection, we look at, oh, you know what? They just set them up and see and stuff like that. No, you see, we, the di digital is the best thing happened to, you know, X-ray. However, what happens is, you know, we are forgetting our responsibility of Allah. You don't have that connection anymore to turn those, you know, KV and mass. You don't have that connection anymore. So what happens is, you know, we're just like, oh, yeah, it's okay. You know, I say, you know, they just got another, you know, just X-ray and stuff like that. He's getting mega voltage. No, every photon counts. Because if you give them, it's kind of good. It may create some kind of cancer in the future, 20, 25 from now. Okay, another thing, look at it. This is overexposure. This also, this overexposure, overexposure of X-ray, this is from the CT. One thing about CT is, CT doesn't give you this kind of image, overexposed. CT has algorithm to fix that. But guess what though? You already gave the dose to the patient. You're gonna have a good image. You're gonna have a good image. But you give a more dose to your patient though. So that's why you have to make sure that you change the technique. Not everybody, when you do simulation, especially when you do simulation, I'm talking about you know, regular CT, when you do simulation, change the technique. Make sure that you know what, not everybody is equal, not everybody needs the same dose. Uh, these are you know, image wedge uh, or bow tie, so them. Uh, we, we, we use uh, for head and neck for other anatomies, and this is this one right here. It doesn't have any uh, wedge and stuff. Make sure you always have the wedge when you x ray, so it goes, you know, less dose to your patient. Make sure it's not out. Practice Alara. Well, I heard the thing, uh, CBCT. Uh, look at the technique right here for the head. You have 100 kV and uh, your mass is 150. Spotlight. This is a 
I think it's uh, TrueBeam. Yeah, TrueBeam have this uh, option. 125 and uh, Umas 750. And look at your pelvis. Your pelvis has like 125 and the mass is 1080. And the dose of patient comes from the mass. So let's ask ourselves, do we need that imaging first? Talk to your doctor. This, the patient needs this imaging. I'm not saying that like if it's needed, hey, there's no any option. We have to give uh, because we're giving them mega voltage radiation. So make sure it's necessary before you ah. do that. Look at the comparison. You know, I, I want you to be aware of that. What kind of mass we're given. You see, that's what I'm saying. When it's digital, yeah. you don't have that connection anymore. with our cave and stuff like that. You know? But I want you to be aware of what we give. That's a lot of dogs giving. But if it's necessary, it's necessary. But you know what the thing is? You don't want to repeat it, though. You don't want to repeat it. If you're doing CBCT, you want to do it perfect first, first time. If you think that your patient is like, you know, it's not online, you know, it's not doesn't set up well, take your KB first. Take your KB before you give a, take your talking out before you give a, you do the, K, you know, the, the, the pelvis uh, CBCT. That way you can save those to your patient. Again, here, for example, right here, uh, this is a scan parameter. Uh, the, the mini scan, the mini scan, when you do mini scan, is the default is 120 and 400. But this is scanned 120 and 200. We cut it by half, 50, you know, by half, we cut it by half. But for mini scan, it's still a patient, the, the doctor be able to see with this where he wants to put the ISO. Cut by half. Just think about it. A lot again. Let's practice that. Default technique. This is untrue beam. Default technique for the brain. KB 85, mass is 5. This is image with 65 KB in 2.5. We cut it by half and lower the KB. Look at that. This is a very good image. You can see everything. We're not diagnosing here. We're just doing it, you know, to make sure that, you know, patient line aligned. But we still, this is good. You agree this is a good x ray? What do you think? You know, we, you know, we, cut, we, we, cut, we cut the mass by, by half. I want you to think, I want us to think that way. A lot again. Let's practice it. Here, brain, you have lateral, you have lateral, and you have AP. So, we know about in, in, you know uh, the, the exit dose versus entry dose. The exit dose is about you know probably 12, 12 percent of the entry dose. So by just swapping instead of like you know every day, if you have like a daily KB for the brain, instead of taking the X-ray every day, right lateral on AP, a swap it to left lateral on PA. So we don't have that. You know, entry dose to go like every day on stuff, especially at eyes. We can reduce a lot of dose on the eye by cutting those, by by just swapping them. Let's say if you have APPA, talk to the doctor. Uh, today you're gonna get PA tomorrow. Today's gonna be right and AP. Tomorrow's gonna be left and PA. Then swap them. All the doctor wants to see is you know the align. That's all we know. We want that for. Collimation. Very, very important. Uh, you know, so the patient is big, you don't be able to see this anatomy. So collimate, so you don't you know, you lower your dose, collimate, so you don't have to repeat it again and again. So if you have a big patient and it's like, it needs like, you know, a high dose to x-ray, do it AP first and make sure you get your left and right in and out. I think it puts you in that part. The only thing you want to do is do lateral just to get your depth. That way, you know, at least you right on, you know, sup inf and left, right. And post, you know, do that. So that make it easier for you. So with the AP. Any patient, any patient, not only have to be pelvis, any patient and stuff like, you know, get, if you be able to get the AP, the AP is not going to get that much dose. Because if you have to repeat, you know, you repeat your AP with the less dose. All right, take home points. With great power comes great responsibility. Like I said, now we are Spider-Man or Superman, so we have to uh, take our responsibility seriously. And, uh, you know, department level, 
how can we kind of uh, to prevent this error what kind of system like a procedure and policies and for personal you know we have to be we have to be you know we have to have that <laughs> to learn uh later on there we, have, we just have to teach ourselves we have to have that desire and the institution need to have make it easy for RTTs, you know, have conference seminar for them, have C credit for them, they can learn. Uh, and uh, again, learning system, uh, have create a committee for the QA, how are we gonna, you know, uh, do our correct action and take your time to design that uh, error prevention and always, always practice a lot, always. And these are the additional resource, uh, uh, what you call, you could go to this link and it's a template, you could, you could use that. Uh, you could create your own checklist. All right, before I end, let's go back here. All right, this is what he said, you know, the reason he said that, uh, let's get that here. He clung to his wish Parts by dying, he clung to this wish that his federation overd overdose, which left him deaf, struggling to see, unable to swallow, burned, with his teeth torn out, with ulcer in his mouth and throat, nauseated, in severe pain, and finally unable to breathe, be studied and talked about publicly so that others might not have to live his nightmare. We come full circle. 2007. Almost what? Almost 17 years. Question is, do we learn? Okay. He has a loved one. He has family. Okay, look at that. This is wrong. What's supposed to happen? Our patient come into radiation treatment. He's inpatient, fighting for his life and died. I want you to think that. That's uh, we know that one thing I want you to take today is you know this, these families. So let's take a minute of silence, all of us. When we do that, when we look at this family, they have loved ones. Let's take a minute of silence. When we do that, let's re re reflect and contemplate why this what happened and how we're gonna prevent it. All right, let's take a minute, please. Thank you. All right, then my next week is going to be uh, learning from each other, transition to IMRT. Uh, these are the reference. Uh, it's gonna, you're going to be, I'll be sending this uh, slide. You could access those reference where all the presentations came from. And thank you. Time for question. Yes. Thank you, uh, dear sir. It was wonderful presentation. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm checking this chart. There is two, three question. Yes, his question is in CBCT, how do you account for this dose in the terms of the dosimetry? The what? CBCT. How yeah. to count to dose dosimetry? Dosimetry yeah. to, to, to the patient or? Uh... Yes, uh, it's gone dose, 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 dose. in CBCT. Yeah, only the CBCT, okay. Yeah, the dose term of the dosimetry. Dosimetry, I will, when we do that, when you do the QA for physics check, or uh, I mean, is it the patient, the dose reach to the patient? Because I mean, if it's patient, we don't check. Uh, yes, I think it's question for the, the patient related, but you know, we won't be able to check that. Uh, I mean, there's no need to check. You know, we just have to avoid giving them high dose. We don't have, I don't, uh, we cannot put them in. Mean, we don't put dosimetry on a patient. Mm. So, and uh, uh, I mean, our machine doesn't track it anyway. It's only track the, the treatment dose. 
But like I said, uh, let's just avoid if you don't need it. Uh, you know, let's just avoid. I, I, one thing I want to add, uh, the head, the head uh, technique for a patient, you know, the CBCT head technique oh. for the patient, it has a construction a field of 25 cm. So earlier you saw that. Uh, let me go back and for a second, actually. Let's see. Yeah, so here I am. Compared to this, when you go like, uh, if you do like uh, thoracic or pelvis, like I said, the dose goes high. But if you have small patient or a, a, a pediatric patient, this thing is 25, in construction, 20, construct the image into 25 cm. 25 cm is big enough for, for a child, for the, for the pediatric patient. So you can use the head technique actually to do a CBCT for the abdomen or pelvis and stuff. So maybe, you know, talk to the physicist to, to develop, you know, what can we use for this patient? You know, maybe have, you know, like if a patient is small, you don't need to go all the way to pelvis technique to do it. Uh, this, uh, I forgot to talk about that earlier, but uh, uh, I just wanna make sure that. Yes. Okay. Means we have to think about when you choose appropriate protocol. Yeah. Right patient, right protocol is very important. True if that. you select a pediatric patient, we have to think about the, your KVS and MAS value. That's right. That's right. Yes. And uh, one more, uh, the therapist asking, can you share me your imaging frequency table for the different treatment site or, or technique? We have any protocol? Because, you know, we don't have that protocol because now, like I said, this is like, you know, true beam and, you know, very, and it's automatically it's digital comes there, you know? So, mm -hmm. but what we could do is if you want, I could build one, you know, based on, the only problem is, you know what? It depends how the machine, for example, if you do, if you do 2100, variant 2100, for the brain, your cave is 100. But when you look at yeah. true beam, your cave is 85. You see, I'm talking about the default based on this machine. So it depends machine to machine, what kind of image, you know, you could get. But what I'm trying to do is try it by lowering, you know, the default, if you have the default uh, setting, try it by lowering, it's step by step, you know, lower 20% on your KV and, you know, bring down your mask down and see, you know, if you can still see your image. Because now, you know, I understand if it was like before, you know, ortho, uh, you know, uh, if you do yeah. ortho stuff, though, maybe you could change your technique, but on this one, you know, be able to do that. But if you want, I could build one, but the only problem is going to happen is what kind of machine is that? Would, would, would that work for that machine? I think you could, you could try your patient. Don't increase your dose, but by lowering your dose, you know, try your patient and see that. Got it. Absolutely. So another is a question for you. In as per you are the, what make a safe workplace for your radiotherapy department? Are your cellular phone allowed for, uh, allowed in during your treatment and social media access to with the uh, uh, phone while active treatment ongoing. Okay, I'm glad you see. I forgot, I'm glad you talked about that. You know about the distraction earlier. I saw you know mental attacks. I talk about cell phone is a no no in the radiation area. Okay. If you are treating a patient, cell phone cannot be there. That should be one of the safety you know safety you know pr procedure. I mean, for the policy, should be no cell phone. Uh, in, in patient work area. You have to think about that. Even beyond that, you know, sometimes what we do is we take our cell phone. We don't supposed to take our cell phone to a bathroom, but people take their cell phone, use them in the, in the bathroom. You know, the cell phone is one of the dirtiest thing. And after you use your cell phone, in case, you know, you don't wash your hand or you don't san sanitize, you're going to touch your patient again. Right. Even infection, you know, from infection uh, control point of view, it's not good. But for being focused, especially right now with all this distraction on Instagram, you know, Facebook, you know, all that, YouTube and stuff like that, you don't want to bring that, you don't want to use that. So it should be one of the policy in the, in the radiation uh, department that no cell phone should be allowed. Correct. We have to follow the, all the safety, uh, like we already told that the safety culture. Exactly, safety culture for sure, for sure. And cell phones yes, are destructive, yes. they're destructive. Yes, and one more question is related to the imaging. Would we recommend the daily portal imaging of patients since every photon count? Yeah, exactly. You see, that's what I say. Talk to, I know, 
you, you want to talk to your patient, for example, I mean, your doctor, I was like, do you want a daily imaging? If the patient is hard to set up, okay, and then and the field is so small and you have to, there's no any choice, okay? Second, it depends. Do, do, we, do we have a policy to image a post-shift? Let's say you, you, take, you take image, you only shift is two millimeter. That, are you required to take that image after the shift? Or can you just say, you know, you have a two millimeter shift, you make your shift, tap the you know, information, uh, you know, patient moved two millimeter left and right. That way, you okay. know, you can save the patient, you know, uh, again, like I said, every photon counts. So when you build the policy, it should be part of it. Discuss with the doctor, you know, how much shift should be required to film. That way, you know, you don't have to film them again. Okay. <laughs> then, you know, does it need it like, you know, how the patient set up? Sometimes you have a patient, a patient only have a weekly film. Then you see the patient the first day, they don't set up well. You take wait. Even though the doctor said a weekly film, then you, you, you want to talk to your patient. Doctor, hey doc, I'm going to say, I'm going to film this patient tomorrow too, just to make sure that he's set up right. See, maybe you may require to film this patient daily if they don't set up right. So see what I'm saying? You have to take that, you know, look at me, you're the one who see your patient. Right. Yeah. You're right, every photon counts, but you know what though? We have to treat them right though. That's the, that's the first thing, we have to treat them in the right spot. But every, every photon counts. But when we take mm -hmm. our X-ray, position them right so we don't have to repeat our X-ray. If it's, if it's a daily X-ray, make sure they are positioned right so we don't have to uh, X-ray them again. Got it. And another one more question related to the imaging. So what actual protocol of patient verification in CBCT or APID? What protocol? Yes, patient verification protocol in CBCT yeah. or EP. And okay. another related question: the what about the intrafraction imaging in pediatric cases? Again, you see, uh, like, like like I said, you're right. You know, uh, the the first one I'll go back to, it, but you see, it come like like I said, since every photon counts, you want to talk to your patient. You want to talk to like it. Do your patient say up right? If they don't set up right, you have to film them. No way, because you know what? Yeah, we have to think about it. First of all, you know, we have to worry about the mega voltage that we give them. That's a mega voltage. We have to worry about that to so make sure that, you know, we use our kilo voltage, a KV, to set them up. Because you don't want to give them mega voltage to the wrong area. That, you know, that comes first. So if that's why you want to talk to the doctor, do you want, you know, if the patient sits up right, you know, what do you think? What we treating? It all depends, you know, on that patient. You know, what we treat, all that stuff. So, but you know, like I said, at the end of the day, we still have to apply a lot of. But you know, the radiation treatment comes first. We don't want to be born unless the patient is perfect. So you have to use your, you know, resource of, you know, either KV or a CBCT to image them. But so, by what you image them, our responsibilities make sure that you image them once. We are repeating. So it's position right and. Let's go back to the first question. Uh, I didn't get that, the verification. Uh, what was that? That is CBCT protocol. Okay. CBCT, and CBCT EPID protocol. Okay, I didn't get that question. So maybe. Uh... One second. Yes. So what is actual protocol of patient verification? CBCT or EPID? Oh, okay, okay. So, you know, when we do a... Uh... Verification, uh, so it depends. Sometimes, you know, the doctor needs verification before we treat the patient. Or is the verification actually, sometimes we even take them to simulation, CT, and do that the whole CT, you know, to make sure that, like, everything else. So it depends as well, you know, how it does, you know, how the patient set up. And, you know, patient lose weight, and you think that they don't set up good, and the mask is too loose, and you don't want to treat that, so probably the doctor may say, no, let's do ver verification scan. And that's actual CT, actually, not CBCT, actually. actually. Sometimes they do actual CT. We do CBCT, too, for verification. But there's actual CT, we do that in the simulation, too. Okay. So, request to all the participants, if you have any question, kindly come forward. You can ask our educator. Yes, additional one question I can see in the chat box. Can you give uh, us a protocol for error logging? Okay, let's see. Now the key is uh, 
we we could have you know ours as you know automatic or created by you know our IT people that's uh, connected to us. But the easiest way to do is to use uh, Excel. See, mm -hmm. yeah, in Excel you could build that, and you know on Excel you could uh, what you call it, uh, you will be able to put you know the errors. You ha you have the date, you know the you could you could divide it like you know major error or you know just uh, near miss, you know all that stuff. You could put that. I think Excel would be easier to create that. But at the same time, probably you know, we'll talk, you know, uh, with a group here, and uh, we, could, we could see like okay, if we find easily easily doable uh, new clinic. Okay, we'll see that. I'm, I'm going to talk to uh, uh, you know talk to uh, Emily, talk to the rest of the group. Uh, Prakash, we're going to do that and see if he if we come up with something for them. Okay, but yes. uh, I think uh, uh, it depends. You know what we have. You know uh, you could do access. You might, you know Microsoft Access to build a database for that too. Because you know uh, they always in uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, it's easy. I mean, accessible most probably. Uh, but we'll see what's accessible to the clinic and what we could build. Uh, we'll talk about that. Yes. Uh, yes. In your, your presentation, someone asked uh, therapist your graph. Most of the errors detected from the by the radiation therapist. Yeah. Would we share us what example error? means maximum error we found in as a therapist this level. One, this one doesn't have it. During, when they have a conference, they just show us, you know. But, you know, think about it, though. How many times, how many times we caught, you know, wrong prescription? How many times we caught, you know, wrong uh, ISO? How many times we caught, you know, wrong setup? How many times? You know, just think about that. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, yeah. So, totally uh, agree with, yes, I totally agree with your statement because most of the times, and then in busy department, we can see that a lot of times we also doing the lot of mistake. True. So, because yes, is the government center the busy workload, yeah. uh, the wrong orientation, wrong wages. So it's happened. True. True. We don't want because you know what comes to us. By the time it comes to us, we go check it. That's why you know we have to make sure we check again and again. You know? Yes. So we call forty five person on that one. So uh, you know nothing should pass us basically. We have to stop it at the end of the day because it's not about the physicist, it's, about the, doctor, it's about the patient. Yes. And we have any incident error form. Suppose if you're in departmental, if error is happen. Yeah. So your department, any uh, incident standard form? Oh, we got like all kind of actually, all kind of uh, software. Like we have like, you know, safety link. We have, you know, we have reporting system. You know, because, you know, things are developing, you know, Come to area right now, especially with all the, uh, the softwares are become so com you know very complex and stuff like that. We got a system that like you know uh, uh, attached to our uh, department. It's a big system. It has a big database. You know we put that. It's easy to you know. But you know it's a uh, it's a uh, I think it's a uh, enterprise kind of software that we lease. You know, so stuff like that. Yeah. But you know there is a there is a there is a software we use. Um, you know, every other year I see a new software, you know, again, getting more options and stuff like that. We do have that. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I know we have uh, those uh, templates, but, you know, we're going to talk to a group. Let's see if there is like, you know, simpler will be available, you know, to the centers. We'll talk about that because these are like very complex and enterprise, you know, they're very costly and stuff like that, what we use. So. Correct, correct. Yes, nowadays our radiotherapy treatment is a complex treatment process. Yes. It is, it yes, is. and uh, many involvement of person like uh, starting from the registration counter to to till end of our radiation therapist. Yes, he is a last man person. Keep your eyes open. See sure. right patient, right plan, and the right delivery is very important sure. before pushing your last button delivery. That's right. So that is very important. Everyone sees the thumb rule. We have to follow, not for the single day entire our profession so because if you do something is wrong directly indirectly it's effect of the quality of the treatment of the patient so earlier we saw the the one example in you sent one article the person is a type because of this mis uh, arrangement or miss uh, incidents has happened treatment delivery Correct. Right. so uh, i would like to uh, if new RTT as a uh, beginner, as a radiation therapist, so what can be uh, they do initially? Because 
the student may come the complete your exam and complete your course and they start for of the profession so what should we know as a student at a very early stage so she should be see like i said when the department builds policies and procedure there should be onboarding procedures that you know what do we do to a new therapist okay for okay. example let's say you bring your therapist let's say you have different kind of machine let's say you have uh true beam and you have, you have for example the you have versa you know you have different machine and that they say that such student that graduates become a therapist he's going let's say he's going to versa for example i think there should be a powerpoint presentation that shows how versa works so okay. they could see that before they go to that machine okay so they be accustomed to that you know what i'm saying what they, they, not the stuff they learn they already learn the stuff but you know what the stuff that therapists do you know how they check a plan how they do stuff like that you know at the same time they get trained they get okay. trained so uh if you have the question you know, then it should be some kind of competency like you come there okay uh, i want you to take you know, just tell them like you expect them in three months you know you want them to know this much and you know you got check them you come you know the, the, the senior therapist come and check them okay how much you know right now so you know helping them teaching them but the key is you know is about to teach not to punish it's a key and the teaching environment should be very very welcoming you know i know a stressful area you know we, we, like i said you know we're working with patient we behind machines down patient is not you know patient is too sick you know it's taking too long now you want to treat this patient in 15 minutes now it's taking you 45 minutes maybe you know you behind you're hungry and stuff like that but it got nothing to do with the new therapist so i'm saying because what i'm saying is you don't have to be angry to a new therapist you know because you know what i'm saying is you know yes. i'm behind i kind of be so we all have to be welcome we have to be patient to teach these people we didn't know before we came to this profession i didn't know nothing somebody was patient enough to teach me so uh, we have to we have to pay forward so that's what it is if there is like you know welcoming environment anybody can learn fast the sort of what it can be toxic we kind of have a toxic environment hello yes yes please 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 we are, i'm actually waiting for you gordon frank Uh, okay, Gordon. How you doing, man? Yes. Fine, yes. thank you. How are you? I'm good, good, man. So I wanted to ask: um, Will you include the role of uh, RTTs in brachytherapy? Because we need to understand where we come in, what we need to do. If it's like image in future, maybe you can include that. Because um, at my center, I don't know to really put that, but. We are told, oh, that's the role of physics. RTTs do not have a part to play. But what if it's something I'm interested in? Okay. So maybe in future you can include such topics. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. You're right. Uh, RTTs are involved in uh, brachytherapy like more than you know before. So you're right. You know we need to have that. I think uh, this uh, RCC has a different uh, program for other uh, pro different. Uh, For break but you know what it should be included on a rtt uh, workflow uh, an rtt what you call it lecture uh, i'm going to talk to you know uh, the group and uh, mention this yeah because uh, now we involve uh, a lot in this uh, break you're right in the future we do that thank you thank you gordon yes i think there is no question sir so we can wind up our session All right. Thank you. Thank you Prakash. Thank you everybody. Yes and uh, thank you sir. Thank you. It was very very wonderful presentation. Thank you man. You clearly uh, share your knowledge and your experience from the what to do, what should be not do, what we should be follow the our standard and culture practice safety practice as per not for beginner but everyone should do day to day. It's very important. and also we, we very clearly mentioned that so the we we always collaboration with work as a medical physicist radiation oncologist and the radiation therapist no one can blame each other we have to learn from the uh, mister from the experience and we can implement our practice day to day so this is a very good platform you share all this information and definitely we can also implement our department or those are joining 
they also consider next time when you're working in the department, suppose one therapist doing the work and one therapist doing the uh, taking the phone call. They may next day may it happen to impact uh, uh, your work culture also. And uh, we know the yes, the safety checks and checklist very important. Everyone can implement it in our department. And yes, as a radiotherapy technology, safety and the patient care is very important. Are actually basically in our fields. So you cover very nicely, sir. And I really appreciate for your uh, the knowledge and your expertise on these fields and the, the related. And you two times your deliver lecture on this platform. I really appreciate and thank you very much for beginnings for the RCC, this uh, IMRT course. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. All right, everybody, have a good one. Have a good weekend.